Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm back with my Raspberry Pi 3 running RetroPie 4.2 and I want to show you how to get the TI-99 emulator installed and up and running. There's a few things you need to know before we get started. I'm going to be using my PC to transfer all of my games and my BIOS over to my Raspberry Pi. You can also do this using the USB method, but in this video I'll be using my PC. With the TI-99 emulator, you're still going to need a keyboard connected. The controller will work when we're in the game, but to enter the game from the main TI-99 screen, you have to press 2 on a keyboard to make it work. I'm sure there's a way around this, but I haven't looked into it because I will play the TI-99 with my keyboard, no trouble at all. Let's go ahead and get started. So first thing you need to do is make sure you're connected online, either with Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Head over to the RetroPie menu. Scroll to RetroPie Setup. Now I'm fully up to date. This should work on the basic 4.2 version, but I definitely recommend updating. First thing you're gonna do is update your RetroPie setup script, let that finish, and then do a basic install. This could take a little while, so just sit back and relax. After you're updated, scroll to Manage Packages, Manage Experimental Packages, and we're gonna find TI-99 SIM. Install from source, and let this finish up. Now that we have the emulator installed, it's good to go ahead and reboot one time. So we'll just go back, back, perform reboot. Yes. Now that we're rebooted, we have the TI-99 emulator installed. We need to install some cartridges. These are gonna be our games and we also need to get the correct BIOS. We're gonna be moving over to my PC. I'm gonna transfer everything over network. But like I said, if you're using the USB ROM transfer method, it will also work. Let's move over to the PC now. All right, so now it's time to transfer our BIOS and our games. I definitely recommend reading over the TI-99 RetroPie wiki page. It tells you everything you need to know. The emulator is the TI-99 SIM, ROM folder, TI-99. The only extensions it accepts are .ctg, which are cartridges. The BIOS is case sensitive, ti994a.ctg. Controller config is hard coded. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, there is an updated installation instructions here. It's a bit long winded, but it could help you out if you're in a jam. All the links will be in the description for this. So on my desktop, I have the BIOS. This is also known as a ROM or a cartridge. This is the TI-99-4A.CTG. Here I have the checksum. I'm gonna leave it in the description so you can download WinMD5 free and check the checksum with this application to make sure you have the correct BIOS because this is the correct BIOS. Next thing you need are some games. These are known as cartridges. This is the only extension that the TI-99 emulator we're using accepts. So you have to find .ctg cartridges or you can convert them yourself. If you read over that installation instructions, it tells you how to do it. This is pretty simple. We're almost ready to go. Make sure you have the correct BIOS and some cartridges. I'm gonna transfer everything over network. So I'm gonna open up a file explorer. At the top, I'm going to type in forward slash forward slash RetroPie, all capital. If you're connected to the same network as your Raspberry Pi, you should get a screen like this. We have our BIOSes, configs, ROMs, splash screens. We're going to open up our BIOS folder and we're just going to drop the TI-99-4A.CTG right in here. Remember, this is case sensitive. Next thing we're gonna do is go back, go to ROMs, find our TI-99 folder, and we're gonna drop our cartridges right in here. So I'm gonna select all of them, and I'm gonna transfer them over to my Raspberry Pi. Now we're ready to play some TI-99 games. We're gonna move back to the Raspberry Pi. Like I said, I have a keyboard connected because the TI-99 was designed as a keyboard computer. So that's how I'm gonna play my games. Let's move over to the Raspberry Pi now. Okay, so now that we have our ROMs and our BIOS installed, we just need to reboot the system one time. So press start, scroll down to quit, restart emulation station. 
If you did everything correctly, you should now have a TI-99 for a computer logo on your main menu. We're going to go ahead and enter here. Now the built-in scraper does work for some games. I only scraped a few, but a lot of them aren't scraping right now, so if you guys have an option for that, please let me know in the comments below. I'm going to start a game real quick. Burger time. You should be presented with the TI-99 boot screen here. Press enter on your keyboard. For TI Basic, press one. We don't wanna do that, we wanna play the game, so we're gonna press two. In most games, we'll have this option to press two to play the game. So I'm gonna press two on my keyboard. It's gonna start the game for me. If you have a mouse connected, you can always move this out of the way. So from here, even at the beginning, if you wanna use your controller, you have to press a key on your keyboard to start the game. I'm going to show you the controller first. It does work in the game. As you can see, I'm moving my character. I'm using an Xbox One S controller. But I prefer using my keyboard itself. This is the way the games were pretty much meant to be played. They did have options for controllers. But it was designed as a keyboard computer, so that's how I want to play them. If you want to exit the emulator, all you have to do is press escape on your keyboard. It'll bring us back into emulation station. You can scroll down and try another game. So that's it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you have the TI-99 emulator up and running on your Raspberry Pi running Retro Pi. If you could, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more great content. And like always, thanks for watching.